Both guys were at their absolute peak in their careers. Taylor was making his second defense of his WBC, WBO, and lineal titles. This is an incredibly ironic detail to this matchup here. Wright did not finish the fight with Vargas, which led to his defeat. In these type of situations when the fight is close and you are the challenger, you must take the title away from the champion and finish the fight. The judges really seemed to look at that and favored Vargas. Vargas has won this last round, I believe. I think so too. And it will all depend on a few close rounds early in the fight. Which way did they go? Wright did the same exact thing despite his past experience and did not fight the 12th round which was the complete deciding factor to the scoring. The judges ruling it a draw. Harold Letterman had it spot on, scoring the fight 114-114 a draw. And I did find it funny that the Sky Sports broadcast criticized Harold's score before the decision was made. I was like, well, what is he doing? I mean, he went in on the flurries, go ahead and fight me. I mean, he, he clearly throwing straight punches, just catching me. If I was him, I just would have kept fighting. That's the difference between us. I felt like he, if he wanted the title so bad, he should have fought all 12 rounds, because that's what I would have did. I mean, that's what I did, I fought all 12 rounds. I didn't get in there running them, them last rounds thinking I had to fight one. You know, I feel like it's a boxing match. You gotta fight all 12 rounds. After the Taylor fight, Wright had one last great performance against Corte and just fell off entirely after that, losing his last three fights. Unfortunately, he was never able to pick up a belt at middleweight. It was Ward's first night back from winning the Super 6 tournament. He challenged the light heavyweight champion Chad Dawson. This fight was at the super middleweight limit and Dawson agreed to come down to 168. Now I'm not sure if this was a shitpost or not. I believe either on boxing scene or Eastside boxing forums at the time, someone made a post saying that Dawson had trouble making the weight and he was going to get knocked out because he was knocked down sparring. This post received a lot of hate and everyone thought it was fake. Dawson for almost three rounds seemed to be controlling the fight well, then Ward got situated and dropped Dawson. Dawson after the third seemed to never get his legs back and was just trying to survive after the six. After being dropped once again in the tenth, Dawson made the wise decision to retire from the fight. Dawson in his next fight will be knocked out in the first round against Adonis Stevenson to lose the light heavyweight title. Chad unfortunately wasn't able to rebound, coming short in key matches that would have put him in the mix for a title shot. This matchup did a whole lot of damage to Rigo. This was the promotion and network's last ditch effort to get people to invest more into Guillermo and get his name out there despite beating Nonito Donaire. Rigo's opponent was supposed to be 48 into former WBA Super Bantamweight Champion Punt Sawat Kratindang Jim which was an amazing choice because he's a good fighter and the style matchup was career changing for Rigo. It was perfect. This fight was supposed to take place on the Donaire Arce card in Texas. It was going to be a very entertaining fight that would have proved the doubters wrong that he can be an entertaining fighter. Now the most craziest thing happened just weeks before the fight took place. Hunsawat tested positive for HIV. The fight is canceled on the spot. Fast forward after Rigo beat Donaire. Rigo was irresponsibly thrown on the Kirkland vs Tapia card. They demoted Kirkland Tapia to the co-main event, which everyone bought tickets to see that fight, really, and had Rigondeaux Abeco as the main event. This fight was an absolute mess. Rigo did put on a boxing masterpiece, but Abeco did not want to fight, making it difficult for Rigo to entertain viewers. Reason why I say viewers because, like I said, Kirkland Tapia was supposed to be the main. Everyone bought tickets for that fight, and once the main event came up, everyone in the audience left. So this fight ruined the promotion of Rigo, and the fight that would have gotten everyone talking again because it was incredibly entertaining, HBO did not want to take the risk again and put up the money to air it. So unfortunately, most American audiences never got to watching this gem between him and Amagasa.
and it was downhill from there. He's now officially labeled as a high risk and low reward fighter for promotions and TV networks in America. I'm no promoter, matchmaker, or manager or anything. Just using some simple common sense here, seeing the potential success fighting in Japan, dude should have signed with a Japanese promoter and stayed there. For the most part, he would have been able to actually defend his belts and have an active career and maybe would have gotten a fight with Quig, Frampton or Cruz in the near future. Good fight ruined by absolute incompetent refereeing. Mars got away with an anomaly of low blows. Then insult to injury, Mars throws the most blatant low blow right in the ref's field of view, dropping a Beko. Now, I'm sure that if the ref would have taken a point away early in the rounds, I would just quit going for the body. Uh, he went down. Obviously, he wanted uh, the ref to, you know, take a point away from me. Oh, he's going to knock down! And I turn around and I see the ref counting. Let's go. And this referee has failed in this fight. Instead of penalizing Mares, Russell Moore, the referee, rules it a knockdown. Abeka was so angry after the fight, he tried going after Mora, and I don't blame him. You know, I mentioned in my previous video how fighters from the continent of Africa always get the short end of the stick, and in the post-fight interview, Abeka discusses that. Uh, I don't know why, uh, especially boxers from Africa, I don't know why this happened to them every time. He never gave, he never won him, he never do anything. And it's like I'm, fight, I'm, I'm fighting the referee and I'm fighting him. It's like he's trying to be, the, be a racist. I need a fair match and now, right now, there's no anything fair. It's like uh, whenever a boxer from Africa fighting, they always try to, fight, to, to cheat him. Margarito gave Cintron his first loss and it really damaged his confidence. Emmanuel Stewart became Cintron's new trainer and he was really starting to flourish under him. Now we all know, at least as early as Margarito vs. Golden Johnson, he was wrapping his hands with plaster. His punches had much more of a crack early on in the fight, and despite Cintron doing well, it was clear he was bothered by Margarito's shots from the opening bell. Antonio's shots looked and sounded far different comparing to the Paul Williams fight and performances before Williams. Cintron claimed it felt like he was being hit by rocks, and I can believe that because the swelling in his face started to really form in the third. Cintron was stopped three rounds later in the sixth round. We've seen a series of them in recent years. This was a tremendous left hand shot to the body, and very often it finishes fights. Jones in May of 2004 receives his first real loss against Antonio Tarver who knocked him out in the second round. Instead of taking the rest of the year off and really giving your body the rest it needs after putting a lot of stress on it, gaining many pounds of muscle the right way to make the heavyweight limit, then to immediately drop the weight within a short period of time to defend your light heavyweight title, then to defend once again five months later to be brutally knocked out, a lot of stress on the body and he needed a good nine months to a year of rest. But he immediately jumps back in the ring with IBF title holder Glenn Johnson. Despite Jones for the most part looking good in spurts, it was apparent that Roy was not 100% that night and Glenn Johnson was just too much for him. Now in Roy's defense, he tried using the same tactics he used against Bryant Brandon many years ago. But Glenn Johnson is no Bryant Brandon. The best way to fight Glenn Johnson is the way Bernard Hopkins did, in which he completely dismantled Johnson. Johnson ends up knocking out Jones cold in the beginning of the ninth round. Turned it up against he a takes right a hand hand and a left hand, and he's on the canvas again, and he's been knocked out again. Will we ever see Roy Jones nope. in the ring again? The fact that he was knocked out two times close together, he may have suffered, which I have from my experience, so, which is like a permanent little damage to the brain, which sometimes happens when fighters get knocked out close together, and they never would be able to take a punch good after that. Hamed was on top of the world, and after this fight, he had plans of moving up to fight guys like Floyd Mayweather. Floyd made his last title defense and moved up to lightweight at the end of 2001. Ahmed was definitely the cash cow of the lower weight classes. His purse of the Barrera fight was 8.5 million. That's a lot for today, 
and incredible for 2001. I can't really name a featherweight today who makes as much as Hamed, or even near as much. A fight between Hamed and Floyd, I would say it would have been likely to happen if Hamed won against Barrera. So Marco puts on an absolute show and gives Hamed a boxing lesson to become the lineal featherweight champion. To have a style like Hamed, you must have confidence, have that instinct. You can't have any doubts or second guesses. So when he lost, he lost pretty much all of that. He had completely lost that fire and that overconfidence that worked in his benefit before the Barrera fight. Hamed would only fight one last time after Barrera and he did not look good at all. Many of the fight fans were booing then to leave the venue before the 12th round. Hamed retired right after that fight. His claim for retirement was chronic problems with his hands. Reed since winning a gold medal and turning pro had an already closing window on himself due to an eye injury which was causing his eye to sag. He became champion rather quickly after turning pro and his 12th pro bout. He made two defenses before he was put up against Felix Tito Trinidad. The fight was rather even in the first, Reed dropping Trinidad in the third. Trinidad would take over the second half, dropping Reed in the seventh, then three times in the eleventh. The fight was almost stopped in the corner, going to the twelfth. Reed's eye was looking awful. The doctor must have known Reed's story and gave him a chance to finish the fight and urged him to protect himself. Reed finished the fight strong. Trinidad won by unanimous decision, 114-107 making the four knockdowns the factor of the fight. Reed will be diagnosed with a detached retina and will retire from boxing entirely the next year. Gonzalez manager and promoter put all their eggs in the basket with Gonzalez. If he didn't win, they will dissolve financially. A Gonzalez win will get him a shot at the title. Gonzalez out hustled Pascal and did enough to win the fight. I cringe every time when Michael Buffer says before we go to the scorecards, let's give a round of applause. That's letting everyone give their final applause before they start booing. A lot of times he's about to announce a controversial decision. Gonzalez loses by a narrow, unanimous decision. Gonzalez can't believe it. The people around Gonzalez can't believe it. Bernard Hopkins, you can't believe it. No, I can't. I can't believe that. Oh, look, he's, he's weeping. He's weeping. I mean, that was his big chance. And no, the good news for Gonzalez is he fought so well, he is now a player, and there will be more opportunity for him. Unfortunately, that was the closest fight he came to putting himself into a position to fight for the title. Gonzalez has been out of the ring since 2017. There were talks of him coming back in a boxing scene interview, but with sports this year put on hold due to the virus, that may have canceled his plans for a comeback. And on top of that, this is the most career damaging fights in boxing. For more videos like these, be sure to like, and if you're new, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram for video updates, boxing news, memes, whatever. I'm Alfonso Hancho, and I'm out.